So in our last class, which was also our first class, we were able to persuade ourselves that in the rational tangle dance, in the system in which we build up tangled ropes by using a combination of twists and rotation movements, that that rotation movement that we did in the rational tangle dance had a fairly straightforward way to undo. Right? In order to undo a 90 degree rotation, we just need to do the same 90 degree rotation three times. Right? Rotate by 270 is the same as rotate by minus 90. So the element R in the rational tangle dance is straightforward to reverse. Its inverse is equal to its own cube. But the interesting question, even more interesting question, was can we undo the twist? That maneuver which takes the top right corner of a tangle and brings it underneath the bottom right to create a new crossing over on the right side of a rational tangle. So if you hand me a tangle that we're going to call G, and then I put a twist in that tangle, then how, through this process of using the same twists and rotations, can we untangle that twist? How do we get our original tangle back? And so using ropes and a cardboard uh, rectangle in the classroom, we were able to convince ourselves that reversing that T actually requires us to do a whole bunch of more steps of rotation and twisting. In particular, in order to get this twist off, we have to rotate and then twist and then rotate and then twist and then rotate one more time. But by the end of all of that rotating and twisting, we've gotten our original tangle G back. And so from the point of view of algebra, this observation that we just made shows us what the inverse of T is because it shows us how to cancel this T from my tangle. I'm using the word cancel here very deliberately because after all, if algebra is going to be about solving equations to discover unknown quantities, then one of the most fundamental things that we're going to need to be able to do is to cancel operations from uh, an expression or an equation. So to say that RT, RT, R cancels this T when I multiply by it on the right of that T is one way of expressing an inverse, right? That somehow RT, RT, R is acting like it's an inverse to the twist T. And it's an inverse that's operating on the right-hand side of this T. So the twist has already been done, and then I have to do more stuff. But it turns out that the same also works if I do all of this blue stuff first, R, T, R, T, R, and then I apply a twist, that it also cancels that twist when I operate on the left. And so, using some terminology, we'll say that this element, R, T, R, T, R, this dance, is both the right inverse of a twist, so it cancels a T when we do it afterwards, and it also cancels the T when we do it before the T, which makes it the left inverse. And because this element is both the right inverse and the left inverse, we'll say that it's a two-sided inverse of T. In the interest of full disclosure, I've been using the word the here when I talk about these inverses, but I probably shouldn't. I should probably be really careful and say all we've shown here is that this element is a inverse of t. It's an inverse, sorry. Because we haven't yet shown that inverses of elements are necessarily unique. Right? Couldn't an element have more than one inverse? Is this the only way to undo a twist? That we have not proven, and that's something we will have to prove later on down the line. So maybe ignore the word the here, and we should think of it as just being an inverse of t. So what about the other properties of the algebra in the, in the rational tangle world? Okay. How else do t's and r's interact with one another that we can say? Well, we can say for sure, and it doesn't take a lot of convincing, that the operation of following one dance with another that defines the verb for which these t's and r's are nouns, right, that that operation is not commutative. Whether I do twists before or after rotations actually can make a pretty significant difference. For example, if you were to form the tangle that corresponds to the dance R, 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 T, T, you would get a very different tangle than the one that you would get by doing R, T, R, T, R. It's the same number of rotates and twists done in a different order. And when we do them in a different order, the tangle that we get ends up being a different tangle. And so because that's the case, it's not true that the operation in this environment is commutative. It matters which order we do our R's and T's. What doesn't matter is the order in which we evaluate the operations 
on a successive product of three or more elements. So if I have TRT, for example, it doesn't matter if I dance out TR and then I add a twist to that, compared to if I start with a twist and then I dance out RT. Those results do end up being the same, not just for this combination of three dance steps, but in fact it turns out for any combination of dance steps. The order in which I evaluate the successive uh, groupings of these operations doesn't matter. And that makes the operation an associative operation. So we pass the associativity test, but we fail the commutativity test. Um, and that gives us a, a bit of a clue into what the structure of T's and R's look like in the rational tangle dance. So where we wanted to go with this next is to kind of close the book on rational tangles for a bit and think about a different kind of T and R. A T and R that arise not from the tangling up of ropes, but from the symmetries we can apply to regular polygons, squares, equilateral triangles, equilateral hexagons, and so forth. We're going to create a different T and a different R and look at the ways in which the properties of that different T and R are similar and different from the ones that we've learned for rational tangles.